starts with question 1.1, which reads, which one of the following is the general formula for alkanes? And alkanes always have the general formula Cn, H, 2n plus 2, where alkenes have the general formula Cn, H, 2n, and alkynes have the general formula Cn, H, 2n minus 2. That is the alkenes, and these are the alkynes. Question 1.2 reads, the empirical formula of hexanoic acid. And so we start by drawing the molecular formula for hexanoic acid, meth, eth, probe, but, pent, hex. And the anoic acid gets the group with a double bonded carbon and a hydroxyl group where they are obviously then hydrogens to complete the four bonds on each carbon. So what we can see here is that this formula has six carbons. It then has 12 hydrogens and two oxygens. And we'd be tempted to therefore say that option C is the correct answer, but we must remember that the question is asked for the empirical formula for hexanoic acid, where empirical formula is the simplest ratio of the atoms to each other. So although this is the molecular formula for hexanoic acid, the simplest ratio for hexanoic acid would be C3H6O, where we have simplified that bit by dividing the number of each atom by two. And so our correct option for 1.2 is option D, the empirical formula for hexanoic acid is C3H6O. Question 1.3, which one of the following is the correct structural formula for methyl ethanoate? And so we can see here that this is an ester and an ester is made up of two groups where the first group, the methyl is the part that is attached only to the single bond oxygen. So we are looking for a group where there is one carbon attached to the single bond oxygen and ethanoate is the part that is attached to the single bond oxygen and double bond oxygen so two carbons there which means that option c is then our correct option because here we can see that there is a single carbon attached to with a single bond to the oxygen and then two carbons attached by single bond to the oxygen and double bond to a another oxygen. Question 1.4 and 1.5. 1.4 reads, zinc granules react with excess hydrochloric acid solution in the reaction given here. Which one of the following combinations of volume and concentration of HCl will result in the highest initial reaction rate for the same mass of zinc granules used? Assume that the zinc granules are completely covered by the acid in all cases. Now, what's important for us to see here is that they've told us initially, they've told us that there's excess hydrochloric acid. The fact that there's excess hydrochloric acid means that the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that is that are present is actually not that important to us, especially since they've then asked us for the initial reaction rate, where we know that the only thing that can then affect the rate of a reaction is the concentration. And so our answer here very simply is to choose the hydrochloric acid solution that has the highest concentration, the highest concentration being that of option B, which is the correct answer to 1.4. 1.5 reads, the role of a catalyst in a chemical reaction is to increase the, and the catalyst we know does not increase the rate of the forward more than the rate of the reverse, we know that all that a catalyst does it is it increases the entire rate of the reaction. It doesn't change the heat of the reaction. It does change the activation energy, but it actually decreases the activation energy. And so the only thing that the catalyst does for or does increase is the rate of reaction. So the correct answer there to 1.5 is option D question 1.6 which reads consider the equilibrium represented by the balanced equation below which one of the following changes to the equilibrium will favor the forward reaction and there are two factors that we are changing here the first is temperature 
where we are going to refer to the enthalpy change that's given to us that tells us the enthalpy being negative means that the forward reaction is exothermic, meaning the forward reaction heats up. And the second change that we're going to be making is to the pH, where we know pH is about the hydrogen ion or the hydronium ion concentration, where a higher hydronium ion concentration or hydrogen ion concentration means a lower pH. And so the changes that we can make here, we know that in order to favor the forward reaction in terms of temperature, by Le Chatelier's principle, if we wanted to favor the forward reaction, which is exothermic, we would have to cool this reaction down because by cooling it down, Le Chatelier tries to counter that change by heating itself up, thereby favoring the forward reaction, which is exothermic, which means that our option in terms of temperature change is either decreasing the temperature or is only decreasing the temperature, meaning option A or option B. The next change is changing the pH, where what we need to do is we want to favor the forward reaction. What we can hopefully see here is that there are hydrogen ions present in the reactants on the left hand side of this reaction. And so if we want to favor the forward reaction, that means that we want to favor the direction that uses up this hydrogen ion. And that means that what we would need to do is we would initially want to increase the hydrogen ion concentration, basically because by Le Chatelier's principle, if I increase the concentration of one of the reactants, we will favor the forward reaction to try to counter that change. Now, increasing the concentration of hydrogen ions, we know is going to make the solution more acidic, which is actually going to make the pH of the solution decrease because the pH as it becomes more acidic heads away from seven more towards zero. And so what we're looking at here is we're saying that option B is the correct option because decreasing the temperature will favor the forward reaction, which is exothermic and decreasing the pH would mean adding more hydrogen ions, which again would favor the forward reaction. And so we can then say that our correct answer is option B multiple choice question 1.7 which reads the conjugate base of HPO4 with a charge of 2 minus is and we are given various options what's important to remember here is that a conjugate acid base pair is related by the gain or loss of a single proton and when they ask us for a conjugate base that means that the substance that we are given is an acid because this acid will have a conjugate base. And an acid is defined in this theory as a proton donor, meaning something that will give away a proton. In this case, HPO4 has only one proton to give, and therefore once it has given that proton, it will just be left with PO4 with a charge or valency of minus three, which means then that the correct answer is option B question 1.8 in multiple choice which reads which one of the following reactions will proceed spontaneously under standard conditions and we when we're using table 4b of standard reduction potentials we know that the way to identify a spontaneous reaction is by finding a reaction in which the oxidation half reaction occurs above the reduction half reaction on this table. So we want a substance that is oxidized and then we move down the table to find something that is reduced. So we can go through these options that are given. The first option is we see that nickel goes from having a charge of plus two to being neutral. And so we can find that half reaction. We can see that that half reaction is listed here on the table of standard reduction potentials and when reading from left to right, that is a reduction half reaction. The other half reaction here is the half reaction where hydrogen goes from being H2 to forming hydrogen ions. And that means that this hydrogen half reaction over here is the oxidation half reaction, which means that this is not a spontaneous reaction. 
Our next option is to look at option B, where we go from bromine molecules to bromine ions. And we find that half reaction on this table of standard reduction potentials. And we see that that half reaction is the reduction half reaction where bromine is gaining electrons. And the other half reaction there is the re half reaction from chlorine ions to chlorine molecules, where we can see that that is also an oxidation half reaction, which then again shows that that is a non-spontaneous reaction. Option C sees us going from Fe3 plus ions to Fe2 plus ions. We can find these or this half reaction on the table of standard reduction potentials where this is our reduction half reaction. And the other half reaction is our half reaction from iodine ions to iodine molecules, which we find just slightly above that. And we see that that is indeed an oxidation half reaction, which means that we then create a spontaneous reaction because iron is easily oxidized, excuse me, iodine is easily oxidized. We then move down the table to find that our iron is then easily reduced. So the correct answer here is option C. This is our spontaneous half reaction. Question 1.9, which reads, the simplified diagram below represents an electrochemical cell used for the purification of copper. And we can see here that this is an electrochemical cell because it has a battery or a cell where we know that the long terminal is the positive one, the short one is the negative one, which means that we have a flow of electrons that is from electrode Q towards electrode P. And so the question reads, which one of the graphs below represents the change in mass of electrodes P and Q during the purification process. And we identify this change in mass by seeing that electrode Q, since this is the one that is giving off electrode or electrons, electrode Q must therefore be the electrode that is undergoing oxidation. So what is happening here is that we have, or we would normally have the impure copper on this electrode where as it is oxidized and gives away its electrons, the copper ions would then join the solution. Those electrons are then transferred through the cell towards electrode Q, where the electrodes then attract only the pure copper where we then have reduction taking place. From this, we can see that therefore the mass of electrode P is going to be increasing while the mass of electrode Q is going to be decreasing. And we can see that both options A and C have the same setup where the mass of P is increasing and the mass of Q is decreasing. The difference here is that in A, we are saying that the electrode mass or electrode P starts with a non-zero mass, whereas option C, the mass starts at zero. Now, it's not possible for reduction to take place unless there is already something there to start with that can host those electrons for reductions to take place, which means that the mass of electrode P cannot start out as zero because reduction needs to take place on an electrode and therefore it must have mass, which means that the correct answer to question 1.9 is option A. Question 1.10, which reads, eutrophication in water is caused by, and we know that eutrophication is the increase in plant nutrients that forms in the water that can lead to things like algal bloom. So by knowing the theory here, we know that option C is the correct answer because when the plant nutrients increase, it builds up in the water, which can then lead to algal bloom. So the correct answer to 1.10 is C.